A similar single-mindedness is found among monks and nuns all over the world. A preoccupation with the afterlife compensates them for their loss of both family and sexuality in this life, or so it would appear. In their cloistered communities, it's hard to imagine what really happens to their biological urges. One can only guess that somehow they manage to sublimate them by transforming them into sacred experiences and religious ecstasies. For nuns, it's possible to experience an emotional substitute for married life. They can undergo a ritual that marries them to Christ. As brides of Christ, they may then be able to feel themselves in a spiritual form of pair bond, which may go some way to satisfy their deep-seated biological urge to set up a family unit. By then engaging in nurturing, caring activities of various kinds, they can also find an outlet for their maternal urges. For them, all God's children become their children and need to be protected, healed and fed. This is the Salvador Dali Museum in Figueres in northeastern Spain. Salvador Dali, the famous Spanish artist, and his wife Gala had a very strange sexual relationship. They were very remote from one another. He lived in his house on the sea, she lived in an inland castle, and occasionally one would go to the other. In fact, in their later lives, the most intimate moment they shared, really, was when he drove her in his Cadillac around the grounds of her castle but that was just after she had died. Now, bearing in mind their strange sexual relationship, it's not surprising that when Dali invented what he called his own personal perversion, it too lacked intimacy. He called it cledalism, and in it, the man and woman were able to reach simultaneous orgasm without touching one another. In fact, they could even be in a separate room. Now, all this is very odd to us today, and yet, many human beings in modern times have lived adult sex lives in which there's very little physical contact with other people. Increasingly, we're seeing solitary sex. The ultimate form of solitary sex is now available via the internet. Interactive sex with a distant partner is possible through the magic of the computer. Salvador Dali would have relished this as a modern form of credulism. A man calls up a woman who's sitting alone in a room on the other side of the world, in this case 6,000 miles away. She appears on his screen and then responds to whatever request he taps onto his keyboard. Solitary sex has many advantages. It avoids domestic fighting. It avoids messy divorce proceedings, unwanted pregnancies, pious frustrations, and of course, it avoids AIDS. It's little wonder that it's becoming increasingly popular. All that's missing is intimacy and love. Hello. Hi, is this John? Uh, how much more do you want to see? Lots more? I don't want to burn out your monitor. 
Solitary sex may have its appeal for some, but the truth is that even today we remain an essentially pair bonding species, programmed to fall in love and set up family units. Our modern lifestyle may make this difficult, but it remains our genetic heritage, and sooner or later most people are going to feel the urge to pair off. If in the crowded conditions of city life this is hard to achieve, then special measures may have to be taken to aid the process. This is a singles convention in the United States, where everyone present is seeking a mate and has come here specifically to find one. Boy meets girl should happen naturally, almost by accident, but if it doesn't, then events like this can come to the rescue. Everyone fills in a form describing their personal details and then they all eagerly await a response. It may seem like an artificial way to find a lifetime partner, but then living in a huge impersonal city is itself an artificial lifestyle for human beings whose ancient ancestors evolved in small tribal groups where finding a mate was easy. Another kind of problem exists for those who live not in overcrowded cities, but scattered out thinly over vast areas. This is Finland, one of the largest countries in Europe, but with one of the smallest populations. In the icy landscapes close to the Arctic Circle, the population is so spread out that there's little chance of a casual meeting with the partner of your dreams. So again, something has to be done to help the pairing off process. The answer is the summer lavatancit, which may look like a simple local dance party, but which is in reality a serious mating ritual. Some of the people present would have driven over a hundred miles to attend, and there's an urgency in the air. Men approach women and with barely a word exchanged, they start to dance, testing one another for any favourable reactions. Many of the men here are farmers, living in such isolated locations that women aren't too keen to join them on a permanent basis. But, as with so many human beings, the overriding concern is to find a marriage partner and establish a family unit, no matter how difficult this might prove to be.